So I still need some odds and ends before I assemble the wings. So that's kind of dragging out, but I figured I could do something else while I wait. So I'm going to make the wing tip bows. Uh, they're made out of 5 inch, H, uh, five eighths inch aluminum tubing right here. Um, and the plans just give you measurements from a baseline here. You just measure up, add a number of points, and then connect them with a line. So I've got some scrap pieces of plywood, four pieces, and you start out by measuring an inch and then an inch. So one inch is uh, five and three eighths at the next inch here. Um, I think it's nine inches and then from there on out it goes at two inch increments. And I just put a little mark at each of those spots and then just um, connected by hand, just free-handed a curve around there. Um, what's kind of annoying is that those measurements go to the outer edge and you're probably not going to make a form out here and push the tube into it. You're probably going to make a form on the inside and bend the tube around that. At least that's that was what makes sense to me. So I just took a piece of material that's about 5 eighths of an inch, which is the size of the tube, took a piece, held the pencil up against it, and ran the piece along this line to transfer the mark in 5 eighths of an inch. So I'll just cut along this with a hacksaw and then using the oscillating belt sander um, smooth out the curve and then I'll just clamp these pieces to the workbench here and pull the tube around that form. And then there's one other step. The bow also goes upward for the most part it looks like there's just a single bend right there. So if you just make a bend right there that comes down and then it looks like this more or less um, goes straight down to the rear. I'll measure it out but I, I think for the most part there'll be just a single bend right there. So that's what I'm doing. Got to make four of those and um, Looks like these are all the same. Um, all four of them looks like they're the same, so I'll make four of these. And this is, oh, it says right there, three-quarter scale. So, so you can't just copy this. You've got to go off of off the measurements. All right, it's ready to go. Um, I don't know if it's perfect but I think it's pretty good and I think small imperfections might uh, might not show up because the tubing hopefully will it's a big enough diameter that it'll just hit the high spots and smooth out a little bit actually I may may adjust this piece right here a little bit but it's pretty close so I think I'm pretty close to bending this is straight right here for five and I think it's five and three eighths yeah so what I may do, I may, well, start off maybe clamping it, running a clamp all the way across here and clamping this down, and then just bend it around here. And then this end, and you end up hammering it down to flatten it, because this is the trailing edge, which of course comes down to a point. So the, the last little bit of tubing, just a little bit here, gets flattened out to kind of fit along the trailing edge. But I think I'll wait to do that until I fit it to the wing. Um, and it gets cut off an inch short here as well. This end, the tubing comes all the way to here. Over here, the tubing stops an inch short and gets flattened out. So what I'll probably do is just leave the tubing. I don't know how long that is. I imagine that the plans call for it being a little bit longer than, than it'll end up. That seems typical. So I'll start with it flush here, I think. Clamp it across. Pull it around to get the shape and then I may uh, I may cut it here that'll still be an inch extra and then I may go ahead and put the the vertical bend in it because it comes out and then goes up a little bit and then gradually down to the trailing edge the wing tip 
sits a little bit high. It's arched a little bit. So, all right, I'm about ready to give it a shot. I'll just fine tune this and then give it a whack. All right, so um, I've got a clamp that's plenty big to fit this way, but the end of it's here and I couldn't clamp it down because since the clamp's flat against the table here, um, the handle just bumps into the table, so that, that wouldn't work. But this is, I think, just as good. Well, it's better because it actually works. Just clamped a piece of wood here to hold this piece of material in place. And I uh, ran the end of this aluminum uh, tubing up against my oscillating spindle sander with a fence in place, or a miter, a miter gauge, a miter, miter fence in place, so that the, it'd be perpendicular and just to clean up that end. Did that and then deburred it, and now it's in place, and I'm ready to bend it. Um, so, I'm going to walk over, actually across the table, so I can get the other end. And I'll start over there, start bending. It's not, I, I think it's not a sharp enough bend where the tubing will crush. If it's, for a, for a certain diameter of tubing, you can bend it only so sharp before it starts to flatten out and just fold. I don't think this is sharp enough where that's going to happen. I guess we'll find out. In that kind of case, there's springs you can put inside these things or you can pull them, put them full of sand or other things you can put inside to support them while you bend. But I don't think I'm going to need to do that here. We'll see. This I'm happy with this. I cleaned up that. So I, I think I've got a good curve here. So let me go over here and just start making this bend and let's see what happens. I suppose if it starts to crush I can uh, stop. Oh, it's loosening my jig so let me tighten that up a little bit and try again. So it was just a little block on the wood there that was moving because I've got two, four, six, eight clamps on on these bigger pieces of wood, so I don't think they moved at all. Just the leverage popped that little block over, so I, I needed to put some bigger clamps on it. But I don't know if you can see it started to bend. Um, I was actually starting to think, huh, oh, this isn't going to work. Something's going to break or whatever. But it bent a little bit, so I am concerned at the force it's taking, but I haven't worked with metal much, so maybe this is normal. It's bending, and it doesn't look like it's collapsing. Woo! There it goes. Yikes. Kind of makes me nervous. Ah, there it goes. Boy, once it started to go, it's easier. Alright, i got to move the tripod because the tubing is about to hit it here so I'll get a different angle and we'll keep going boy as it starts to bend it goes easier although well, you can see there that there's a lot of spring back which now makes me think I'm gonna have to bend it further than what this form is and then it'll spring back to the shape of this form. Huh. So, I might actually need to recut this form. Maybe what I'll do is trace this form on the table, cut the form smaller, and keep bending it along the form until it springs back to the outline on the table. So, let's keep going though for the time being. So the, the sharpest part, I think, is right in here, so it doesn't look like it got crushed at all, so I've got high hopes that this won't be too terrible. It might actually work out okay. Woohoo! Look at that. Awesome. Holy cow. Talk about spring back. Okay, 
so anyway I think I'll be able to do this I just gotta worry about the spring back here. that's tons of spring back so I'll think about how to do this so I went and read the directions and he just says uh, Barney Oldfield, I guess, the one who wrote the instructions, um, the designer, he said just bend it on your knee. Um, you don't have much to hang on to out on the end here, and I had to bend it more at this point. So I just clamped this in a vise with a couple pieces of aluminum for padding, and you don't clamp it tight or you'll just crush the tube very easily. So I clamped that in a vise to get a little more bend right here. You can't do that with your hands and your knee, I don't think. But the rest of this, if it's too much, I can just push on the table here to unbend it a little bit. Otherwise, um, it seems like I'll be able to do it all on my knee. And I'm just uh, going very gently. Um, and look to see where it needs more bending. To see where it starts to move away from the wood. It starts to move away right here, so I'll bend a little more right there and then just work your way along and it's not too difficult it's a little bit of a challenge but not terrible so I think ouch that's just how I'll do it I'll probably have a sore knee when I'm finished but I don't think it's too terrible it's probably the easiest way to do it and then just use my form here to uh, to compare it to. You probably don't even need to make a form if you're going to bend it with your knee or over something that's round. You could push, it, get something around on the table and push down over it maybe. Um, and then just compare with a line that you've drawn on the table. That's probably adequate. You probably don't need to make this form because as it turns out, it's really not too helpful. Got a pretty good bend there. Maybe too much. <clears throat> well, not too much, I guess, but... I need to take a little bend out over there. It's, uh, you might want a knee pad, actually. It's a little bit tough on the knee. I can feel it bend a little bit there. All right. And what you can do, you can do all four of them the same exact way. And then two of them will bend up in one direction. And then the other two, you'd need to flip over this way and bend those up this direction so that you've got mirror images for the opposite wings two for the right hand two for the left hand now this is a little tricky because you don't want to pull so hard then, then just have the thing fold all of a sudden getting close. The more I bend this over here, I already had a pretty close curve for this much, apparently, because as I get this bent more, this whole section is actually just coming in closer to the wood. Yeah, definitely hard on the knee. At least my knees, which are not that great. Okay, I could feel that bend a little bit.
you really just got to kind of spring it a little bit at a time. Don't, don't just reef on it, just give it a little spring, a little spring. And as you approach enough force, you'll feel it bend. It's pretty close. It's, uh, I need to get it a little further away here because I'm having to tug in on, on this vertical piece to get it to fit tight. So I need a little more bend here and get this out of way from the form just a hair. Yeah, it's not too sophisticated, huh? Well, get my elbow on the end there. You need something to hold on to. Yeah, when you start bending down here, you don't have a lot of leverage on this, so that's pretty tough. Pretty tough. Alright, so I'll do more of this off camera and then come back because this will take a little while. I imagine I'll get better at it and it'll get easier for the, uh, for the next three, but it's a little tricky to get it to conform to this curve. All right. So it's not absolutely perfect, but it's quite close. I just want to try and not to have any sharp bends, but to have a smooth curve um, so that it doesn't look like crap after it's all covered sitting there. Um, you know, it's within maybe a sixteenth of an inch in a couple spots. That could be my form even that's imperfect. So just look at the, the metal, see how it's curved when you're done. And if it looks like it's a pretty smooth curve, I think you're good to go. I'll leave that uh, trailing edge long for the time being as I get closer. And then I'll cut it and start pounding that down flat to fit the trailing edge after the wing is assembled so I can get a good fit there. So I've got a little bit of uh, material to work with on the trailing edge. But that's it. That probably took, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I suspect the subsequent ones will go a little quicker and be a little bit easier. But definitely the leading edge is the, the toughest because there's nothing to hang on to. So you might want to use a vise or a clamp like I've got here on the, on the form to get started. Uh, other than that, I'll probably just do those on my knee. So the other three, I suspect, will go a little bit quicker. And then I'll work on the, the vertical bend to give the, the height difference between the center and the leading and trailing edges. Not too terrible, though. Just a little tough on the knee. So the wingtip bows don't just curve this way, but from after this straight part here it goes up until it gets about eight inches back and then it gradually comes back down and you can see that in the plans here it goes up to about eight inches back where it's almost an inch and a quarter higher than in the front then it slopes back down to the trailing edge so it seems like the easiest way to do that is simply put this back in the vise but this time instead of bending it that way, bend it up right here. And then at this point, I also put that in the vise and just tug on it a little bit until I got it pretty close. So that's one. And then final fitting you'll do when you actually attach it to the wing. So I'm not assuming that this is finished. There'll be some minor adjustments to make. But that's a good starting point prior to, to getting it put on the plane.
another important point to remember. Two of them get bent up this way, the other two get bent in the other direction. This one would be one of the left wing wingtip bows. Then you need to make two of them that would rise in this direction. So that bend would be in the other direction and the bend that's right here would be in the other direction for the right wings. So make sure you don't bend all four of them in the same direction. For the, uh, for the initial bending, just this curve, they're all four the same. But for the second set of curves, the vertical displacement, make two one direction and two the other direction.